<laughs> Welcome to the handling payments topic. After completing this topic, you will be able to list the steps of the payment process and perform them in SAP Business One including incoming payments, outgoing payments, and deposits. Explain the consequences of each step on the involved GL accounts. Adjust the appropriate payment scenario to the customer needs and localization according to decisions made together with client accountant. First, let us look at a typical manual payment process. The customers pay their debts, that is open AR invoices, according to agreed payment terms, cash basic, installments, net 30, etc. In our business example, Maria, the accountant at OEC Computers, deals with incoming payments every afternoon. She views the company bank account online to see incoming payments received from customers via bank transfer. In SAP Business One, she checks the credit card accounts, Visa and MasterCard, to see the amount of credit card incoming payments issued at the store point of sale and in the customer service center during the day. Then, Maria enters a credit card deposit in SAP Business One to record the payments Visa and MasterCard have transferred to the company bank account. Note that in this business example, we focus on the manual payments process. Remember that you also have the payment wizard and the bank statements processing options, which enable you to create incoming and outgoing payments automatically and semi-automatically. To learn more about batch payment creation please refer to the Payment Wizard course. There are four payment means options for incoming payments. We will first look at the three payment means that typically have a two-step process, cash, check and credit card. Regardless of the payment means, when you issue a full incoming payment the open invoice on the customer account is closed. Cash, check and credit card payments are posted to a clearing or temporary account. Note that the term clearing is used in the U.S. localization. In other localizations the term could be temporary account or suspense account. The clearing accounts must be predefined during the setup. In the example shown we see an incoming payment on the left for 105 that generates the following automatic journal entry. Debit to a clearing account cash on hand credit card checks received. Credit to customer account. External tools like point of sale system and authorization of credit card transactions can be integrated into the standard process. The system retrieves the cash and the checks received accounts from the GL account determination window. The credit card account is retrieved from the GL account field in the credit card's definition window under the banking setup in the administration module. On the right, we see the second posting from a deposit document used to transfer the funds from the clearing account to the house bank account and clear the clearing account. Another option for the payment means is the bank transfer. When a customer pays using the bank transfer payment means the transaction does not involve a clearing account. The customer transfers the payment directly to your house bank. Here we see the debit to the house bank account and the credit to the customer account. The windows for incoming and outgoing payments are almost identical. The window is divided into the following parts. The document header area on the top. The area for selecting open invoices, credit memos and journal entries, and for assigning the payment amounts in the middle. The area for entering remarks and displaying totals at the bottom. In the middle area, you select open transactions for payment from the table by using the checkbox in the selected column. The system offers you tools to quickly identify the nature of the documents displayed and to aid in your selection. An asterisk after the invoice date indicates that the invoice is currently due. That is, the invoice due date is earlier than or equal to the current date. The cash discount percentage displays the rate of the cash discount defined for the business partner, depends on the incoming payment date and the invoice date. You can change it if required. The total payment column displays the amount that is outstanding on an invoice. The system proposes the balance due as the amount to be paid. Change this amount if the payment is only for part of the invoice amount. The document type column tells you the origin of each line. For example, IN for invoice, CN for credit memo, and JE for journal entry. Using form settings, you can choose to display the BP reference number indicator in the table. This allows you to base the payment on the vendor's invoice number rather than your own internal document number when you issue an outgoing payment. You can choose whether to have the system display all transactions in the table or to restrict the display to invoices and credit memos. The setting to display all transaction by default is found in the document settings for incoming and outgoing payments. In case you want to document a payment that is not based on an invoice. For example, payment in advance, choose the payment on account option. 
In the presented example, the total amount due includes the payment on account and the total payment amount of the open transactions from the table. After you determine the payment amount, you must specify the payment means. You can select one of the following payment means, check, bank transfer, credit card, or cash. In some countries, you can also use the bill of exchange payment mean. Choose the payment means icon to open the payment means window. In most cases, the payer pays the amount in full using one means of payment. However, it is possible to split the amount among several means of payment. The system takes the details on the means of payment for incoming payments from the customer master record. When you post a payment, the system reconciles the payment with the selected invoices and closes the transactions. If the payment was posted as a payment on account, the invoices and the payment stay open. If a partial payment was made, the system adjusts the balance due appropriately. If you take cash from your cash register or checks from your check drawer and bring them to your bank, you can use the deposit transaction to post this transfer. In this graphic we see the process for cash payments. The incoming payment credits the customer account and debits the cash on hand account. When the deposit is made, the cash deposit is credited and the bank account is debited. A deposit of checks is similar. The incoming payment credits the customer account and debits the checks received account. When the deposit is made, the checks received account is credited and the bank account is debited. SAP Business One supports various scenarios of canceling payments, deposits, and checks. For example, in case you enter a wrong payment or deposit, in situations where a payment is canceled or in case you need to cancel a payment or deposit after the check related to a payment was already deposited. Note that you can cancel one deposited check out of a deposit with multiple checks. For more details on how to cancel payments, deposits, and checks refer to the online help. Working with outgoing payments is similar to incoming payments, except of course that you pay money instead of receiving money. When you create an outgoing payment, there is a debit to the vendor account and a credit to the bank account. Unlike incoming payments, typically the process of manual outgoing payments does not involve clearing or temporary accounts for credit cards, checks and bank transfers. Instead, the credit posting is done directly on the bank account. If you wish to use a clearing or temporary account, an interim account can be manually inserted in the GL account field in the payment means window. Then, when the payment is reduced from the bank, a manual entry should be created to debit the interim account and credit the bank account. Additionally, the payment wizard can be used to automatically generate payments against a clearing account if you define one in the house bank accounts, setup window. Please refer to the payment wizard course to learn more about this process. If you want to set the system to use clearing accounts automatically, you can use the bank statement processing. This functionality can be set up to automatically post the transfer between the clearing and bank accounts. Here are some key points to take away. In incoming payments involving cash, check and credit card, payments are usually posted to a clearing or temporary account. A deposit document must be processed in order to transfer the funds from the clearing account to the house bank account and clear the clearing account. When a customer pays using the bank transfer payment means, the transaction does not involve a clearing account. The customer transfers the payment directly to your house bank. In a payment document, an asterisk after the invoice date indicates that the invoice is currently due. That is, the invoice due date is earlier than or equal to the current date. In outgoing payments typically the process does not involve clearing or temporary accounts. Instead, the credit posting is done directly on the bank account. If you wish to use a clearing or temporary account in outgoing payments, you can do this in three ways. You can manually insert an interim account in the GL account field in the payment means window. You can use the payment wizard to automatically generate payments against a clearing account. Or, you can use the bank statement processing functionality. You have completed the topic on handling payments. Thank you for your time.